everyone, Christy Knight here for Carpenter TV, and I've got Shannon Shore here with me. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right, so we all know you made the horse $1,500 buy-in final table, but leading up to that, how had your World Series gone so far? Well, the series hasn't been, uh, besides the horse final table, the series hadn't been going too well. I was one for 18 <laughs> in events leading up to that, including uh, busting out of the 40K. Mm -hmm. So definitely financially it hadn't been going too well. But uh, there's still some events to be played, and that, that horse definitely uh, got me so, some momentum going into the final events. Starting out with a $40,000 buy-in, does that do anything mentally for you if you start out not cashing in that event, kind of in the hole? Absolutely. I told uh, some people that if they have something like that next year, I probably won't play just because it's like screws with your head so much mm -hmm. to try to chase back 40000 you know, in $1,500 mm -hmm. events. Right. Uh, plus, I mean, there's not too much value in those in that tournament. It's such a tough field, so I don't know if, if uh, it's even worth playing next year, to be honest. Well, you also cashed in an online event too, is that right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> luckily, right after the forty thousand, I finished. Uh, I had a good Sunday and finished third in the Sunday warm up for like seventy dimes. So that nice. that, uh, that helped give me what I thought would be some momentum leading into the first World Series events. It, it didn't quite work out like that. Though. Well, okay. So tell me about the fifteen hundred dollar horse. Um, I know that you're mostly a tournament player. How do you get experience playing all these horse games? Do you just play horse tournaments to get experience? or? Uh, the truth is I don't have a whole lot of experience playing the horse games. I do have like a limit hold them in Omaha 8 background. I've played quite a bit of that online in the mm -hmm. past, but the as far as the stud games, I hardly play, you know, at all. Uh, I guess I have like card sense, so I know like I know right. the rules and how to play the game and just like to apply pressure when and when to like, you know, give hands up and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, Besides so that, uh, you know, I'm probably only about you know middle of the pack skill-wise going into those tournaments. But so, so many like amateur players just play the game so like technically bad that mm -hmm. there's still value and they're still worth playing. So is that why you decided to sign up for the $1,500 horse? Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's just you know beside I guess my other options to go sit at home. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. So I still think there's some value and plus it's a it's a nice relief to play those games that I no limit hold them every day. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, tell me about your day one. Uh, you said that there were a lot of players who, who weren't very experienced, so was it tough wading through kind of the, the beginning field in the beginning? Uh, yeah, my table started off uh, really nice with, with some uh, you know, bad players, and then James Mackey and John Raisner got moved in, and they're obviously going to be tough players no matter what game we're playing. Mm -hmm. So that made it a little tougher, but there still were some weak spots, and uh, I was able to get some chips early, but uh, once those guys were moved in, I lost a few pots to Raisner. I ended up getting down to exactly one 1,000 chip. Wow. Uh, going into playing four 800 Raz in the last break of the night. And uh, I made a jack <laughs> in Raz. It was good good enough to triple up. Oh, wow. I like quadruple up, actually. <laughs> I only went to showdown with Raisner, but mm -hmm. I like quadrupled up in the hand, and uh, the rest was kind of history. What are the games that you see beginning players playing the worst? Uh, probably Raz. I mean, there were a couple times when I'd have guys like board locked and uh, they'd still be calling. Uh, so yeah, I'd say Raz and Stud 8 and stuff, just like guys, you know, playing like strictly high hands, like mm -hmm. calling races with two kings when like a guy raised an ace up front and stuff. That's, I mean, I, I don't know a whole lot about the games, but I, that can't you know, be profitable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so going into day two, you had a little bit of momentum. And how, how did the day two go? Uh, day two went really well right off the start. Uh, I won a couple big Omaha eight pots, and then I think uh, I knocked uh, Jordan Rich out in a Raz pot, and just really started to climb, and I really started to get a feel for the games finally. Uh, and before I knew it, I was uh, actually chip leader as we entered the money, so uh, things went really well. I really got hit by the deck about as as much as I've ever been hit by the deck in a single day, so so that helped. After the two days of playing without a lot of horse experience before this, did you start to feel more comfortable in playing in all the games? Definitely. As we went along, I was kind of watching like the players that I respect that I know were good at the games. Just mm -hmm. like you know, I was normally no one holding. Sometimes I'm snoozing at the table, not really watching what's going on. But in these games, I was eager to learn like how you know why these guys do what they do. So I was watching that, and I learned a lot just watching the good players. And really, I felt comfortable going into the final day playing all five games. Um, did you have any big turning point hands to get you to the final table that uh, were really big, huge for you? Uh, yeah, a couple. Early on, I uh, beat the guy, Mitch, out of a big stud eight or better pot. I scooped him. I had like a three through seven straight. 
and uh, I beat Freddie Ruhadi out of a couple Omaha Eat pots, and he was not a happy camper. I don't think he likes me too much. <laughs> <laughs> how, could, how could someone not like Shannon Shore? He's so sweet. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> uh, no, but he, he didn't appreciate the hands I was raising with, I think. In Stone Eight? Uh, in Omaha Eight, actually. Or Omaha Eight? Yeah, what he, what he, hands did he think Well, he, he, limped and I, he limped up front, and I raised Ace King 7 3, which is pretty standard as far as I'm concerned. I wanted to isolate. Right. And it came like 7 7 5, he check called. Or it came 7 5 5, he check called. Turn was a 7, making me top trips. He check called. River was a queen, and he had like Ace Queen Deuce. So he made a queen on the end, and, and, he, and he, he check called. And he was going called. for an ace too slow. Yeah, oh, okay. and, he, and he check called, and he just went ballistic. But that's, <laughs> that's typical Freddy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you? Uh, I'm playing the 2000 No Limit Hold'em today. Uh, hoping to turn things around in No Limit. I don't have a No Limit cash yet this year. So uh, I don't know, hopefully there's some value out there. And Good luck to my buddy Baseball, who's still in the 1500. Yes. Nice. Uh, hopefully he wins that. How's he doing in chips? Uh, I think he's doing pretty good. I think there's 21 left. He's got to be in the top uh, three or four, I think, with his stat. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, good luck in the No Limit tournament today, and we'll right. definitely watch out for baseball, D. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. lot. Chris, Chris, you're not with Shannon Shore for Carplay TV.